We pity your pathetic dependence on this web video for your weekly news, but here we go anyway. A U.S. nuclear expert has visited the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Lake Barrett spent four years directing cleanup operations after the nuclear disaster on Three Mile Island in 1979. He says the problems at Fukushima Daiichi are far more complex. Barrett was invited by Tokyo Electric Power Company to tour the stricken plant. He inspected the storage tank from which about 300 tons of contaminated water leaked last month. He was also shown a construction site for barriers to prevent radioactive water from seeping into the sea. Barrett says TEPCO's risk management of radioactive water was lax and that it should have designed high barriers around the storage tanks to contain any leaks. Barrett also met TEPCO's President Naomi Hirose. He says the problems at Fukushima Daiichi are further complicated because of the involvement of groundwater. The challenge is huge. Yes. It makes Three Mile Island look very simple. Uh, what you have is much more complex, uh, much more challenging. On Friday, Barrett is expected to meet TEPCO officials at the company's headquarters to get advice on how to manage the radioactive water. We bring new friends to play. Hi. Show how much you care. I wrote this just for you. We make you smile, G. Poor handling of the plant poses a serious threat to local residents. About 40 percent of people who lived around the evacuation zone are choosing not to return, even though they've been told it's now safe. People still cannot live in the areas in red on this map. It's mainly within 20 kilometers of the plant. About 84,000 people were forced to leave those areas after the disaster. Advisories were lifted by March last year in the four municipalities shown in yellow. But NHK has found that only 60% of the 60,000 residents have returned so far. Even though government officials keep saying our area is safe, there are no reliable criteria. That's why it's so difficult for my neighbors to decide whether they should return to their homes. Many evacuees say they're worried about radiation that could harm their health, and they point to the lack of necessary facilities such as hospitals and stores. They also need places to work. Local leaders say they will urge the central government to swiftly tackle the issue. North Korean leaders may be a step closer to making weapons-grade plutonium. Researchers say a recent satellite image suggests a nuclear reactor that had been shuttered is now operating. 
A team of researchers at John Hopkins University analyzed an image taken last month of the reactor at Nyombyon. It's north of the capital Pyongyang. They saw white steam rising from a building near the reactor. They think the building houses steam turbines for generating power. The researchers say the color and amount of steam suggest the reactor is working. North Korean officials disabled the reactor five years ago. They blew it, up, blew it up as part of international talks on the country's nuclear program. But officials backtracked in April when they announced plans to restart the facility. A spokesman for the U.S. State Department said North Korea's nuclear program remains a matter of serious concern. Yeah. <laughs> 
Japanese officials have received approval for a second project to import natural gas from the United States. Officials at the U.S. Department of Energy gave the go-ahead. Japanese trading company Mitsubishi Corporation and utility firm Tokyo Gas are involved in the Shell Gas project in the eastern state of Maryland. They expect to ship 2.3 million tons of the natural gas to Japan every year starting in 2017. Surging output of shale gas is triggering more demand abroad for cheap U.S. fuel. But Washington limits natural gas exports to Japan and other countries without a free trade agreement. The countries must apply to the Energy Department for each project. Japanese engineers are getting ready to build solar power generators for cell phone networks in India. Japan's government is promoting the firm's eco-friendly technologies. Industry Minister Toshimitsu Motegi is in India to sign an agreement with the head of the country's planning commission. The two are expected to agree to equip 60 cell phone base stations with solar power generators and lithium-ion batteries. Japanese companies will also build facilities to supply clean, coal-fired power generation technology. They're competing with Chinese and South Korean rivals for major infrastructure projects in India. A recent survey suggests that uh, many companies expect that a higher consumption tax would have a negative effect on their business. Japanese private research firm Teikoku Data Bank asked firms across the country last month about the expected impact of a consumption tax hike. Just about 11,000 firms responded, and the results show 55.3% believe the tax increase would dampen sales as well as other aspects of their business. 80% of retailers and more than 70% of farming and fishery enterprises said the impact would be negative. Such pessimism stood out in sectors that sell food and other goods to consumers. But the percentage of firms holding such views was 11.8 percentage points lower than in a survey conducted in August last year. Your crippling fear of watching video news recaps should no longer be a problem. 